let's see here. I keep saying that. Keep on saying it. Jacob, how you feeling about uh, Secret Invasion right now? It's all right. It's all right. Is it your favorite Marvel show? I don't know. Is it good? Yeah. How good? I don't know. Oh my goodness. Ah. I wish it was... I don't know. Do you think it would have been better if uh, there weren't other shows also? Or weren't other Marvel shows that had come out? Like if there was only three shows and Secret Invasion came out, do you think it would be good or bad? <clears throat> or better? Do you think it would be better? No effect. No effect. I think it would have been better if I didn't have expectations for Scroll Invasion. Like, in my head, Scroll Invasion is a big deal. But if I had thought of it as a smaller deal going into the show, and if they didn't say a million scrolls are living on Earth, then I would have, A, found it more believable that Nick Fury doesn't ask for help from any Avengers, and B, I would find it more believable that Nick Fury could settle the problem if I just thought of it as being a smaller scale thing. And if I think if we look back on the show as though Scroll Invasion is not supposed to be in a world-changing thing, but, you know, just a serious political issue, uh, it'll all, like... It'll, it'll seem okay, because I feel like right now it feels like some spectacle or suspense is missing, whereas if you thought of it as a smaller scale and softer-spoken political uh, spy thing, then it's not a big deal of those things, that suspense is missing. Yeah, I, I also agree. I do think I thought about it being a bigger thing, but also I kind of like that they're leaning into it being a more spy-secret thing, because it is called Secret Invasion, it is kind of funny, because if you look back at all the comic books where they'll be like, oh, it's a secret invasion comic book, it's usually like some scrolls doing some crazy stuff, fighting some Avengers, and it's like, wow, was this really all that secret? It seems pretty loud and destructive. Whereas now, yeah, you're, it's more quiet, talky, in a good way. And uh, I do think... I, I, yeah, I think the spectacle... There is some missing spectacle. My frustration is I feel like the sixth episode I just hope it doesn't try to do too much because I feel like there's a way it could it could do like oh we're gonna try to give you that spectacle now and then they don't have necessarily the money for it and then it looks not that great and also they leave maybe some other story stuff wanting just so they can have that spectacle that didn't look that great for ten minutes or They'll surprise us, and they'll d double down. Like, maybe you get a fun shootout at one point, but maybe they'll just end on a conversation, a serious conversation, and then it's over. It's possible that some of the bigger implications of the scroll invasion come later. This could be the introduction to the idea and the knowledge that the scrolls are living on Earth, whereas, you know, bigger deals like them impersonating more of the characters we know and maybe infiltrating the Avengers is something that could happen later. Yeah, but I still that still scares me. Unless they do try, like, what if Secret Wars, like, just one of the heroes you think is maybe a nostalgia play cameo or uh, even one of the main Avengers at that point. Next thing you know, what one of these guys was a scroll, and maybe that somehow affects things. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to have anything. Like, all the things they've done with the Marvel shows have been pretty separate now. Kind of. And, you know, there's a lot of times when a Marvel show or a movie will be, like, hinting at a big bad or a big comic book uh, source reference or whatever. And then you'll watch all these videos and I'll be like, Ooh, they're hinting towards this. So I think it's going to be this. And either A, they don't do it at all. And they'll never go back to it again. Those videos do no favors to Marvel because it's like Marvel has always been like loosely inspired by the events and characters of the comics. Never, yeah. it never has it been like an adaptation, so to speak. And so every time there's a video that's like, "Oh, let me tell you the you know the backstory," like backstory's not going to matter. Mm -hmm. Like they, like they might just do one movie or like one episode of a show touching on something or one line of dialogue. You're speaking to a life model decoy of Tony Stark. You know, mm -hmm. it, they might do like a line that references something. They're not going to go into it. They're not going to adapt every storyline. 
Or if they did, or back in the day, if they ever did go into it, it's on Agents of Shield. Yeah, <laughs> and nobody's gonna watch it. Uh, so yeah, so it's like I don't put any hope into them doing anything later. I assume, and maybe I shouldn't assume. It, it'd be cool if they did use some of this, but I would assume Secret Invasion ends with the show. I mean, there's still probably going to be scrolls around, but... Uh, the show might uh, it might be establishing Gaia as a super scroll character f- from going forward. Yeah. 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 And she could be like a superhero scroll, which would be cool. Uh, I like that they did the super scrolls. I, you know, there's just minor nitpicks about, like... In my head, in the comics, I'm obviously always imagining kind of like the heroes that they could use in those, which is usually like Mr. Fantastic or the Human Torch or something. So they'll like stretch their hand and flame it up and be like, oh, I'm a super scroll. But, or, and, or it's like a thing, like basically, yeah. Or, but in this, they're using the heroes that have been established. So they got like group powers and extremis. And those are usually the only two we really see. I don't know what else there is. Probably some super the, strength. The Black Order. Black Order? Thanos' kids. What they have? I don't know what they had, but that but they keep they for those are the people they keep mentioning. Gaia listed them specifically as people that they have the DNA of. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Man, I don't know, man. I don't know. Secret Invasion, it's good. I love what Sam Jackson's doing. I love all the acting has been good. The acting has been spectacular, and the violence—it's like so violent. So so yeah oh yeah yeah so okay, the yeah the violence it has been sinking harsh violence in there. Uh, I think a little bit. It's like appreciating The Last of Us, where it was like where The Last of Us didn't go into uh, action. This show isn't going into spectacle. But mm-hmm. but the same way The Last of Us uh, honored and you know respected the character and story of the game, this is like honoring the potential of the actors to just yes. to just chew up a scene. I love and honestly, in all the Marvel shows, those are the scenes I love most when they literally just were like, okay, we're going to set these two actors down for ten minutes and we're going to just have them talk because it's like that's kind of all the stuff that I kind of don't get from the movies and that's the one up that the TV shows do get to get they had to have oh look it's these two characters and they get to talk for a long time about whatever and it's like oh like it takes me back to like uh stinking ultimate Spider-Man uh no Marvel Ultimate Alliance when you if you had a specific character that matched with a different character they would just talk to each other and like have a whole little aside it's like, oh, okay, well, there's history here and all this. And I love that. That like more of that. Like they had a great scene. I love. I'm. I love that Don Cheadle is in the show as much as he's in it. Because usually, especially lately, we've only sort of seen him pop in for like a scene or an episode and then leave. And this, he's actually in. He's in almost every episode this season of a show. So that's even cooler. Uh, let's see. And I want to point out the guy who plays uh, Talos, Ben Mendelsohn, top tier. Ben Mendelsohn, uh, he's he he's does like he made he's the best part of Captain Marvel for a lot of people, the movie. Uh, he's just about my favorite part of this show. Uh, Sam Jackson's obviously amazing, and he has a lot of great scenes, but. What I loved most was that train scene with Ben Mendelsohn and Sam Jackson. And Ben Mendelsohn's breaking the news. Oh, there's a million scrolls here and all this. And, like, that whole scene is, like, man. It, uh, so good. Also him and Nick in the car on their way to stop the missile launch. You know, they're, he's, he's just going on a, a rant about how, like, we did all the work for you. You, you got where you are because of us. Mm-hmm. That was great. And it was and it ended funny. Where he was like, yes. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember. You know, they were like, they were like, yeah, we're here. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, that was so good. And it kind of reminded me of True Detective that one little car scene, just because it was a car scene. But I was like, I was thinking I was gonna do that, like, you know, one that says a long thing, and then the other one gets to just really comment on that or just say you're weird and crazy. 
But no, instead it's like, all right, we're here. Let's get out and go and do the work. Yeah, he's like, you went on your little rant. We did that. We did that. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Uh, it, it's good. Also too expensive. Everything's too expensive. I'm surprised at how expensive it is, given, again, that there isn't a lot of spectacle going on. That yeah. it is mostly just two people talking at any given point in time. They said it was $250 million. It could be that there is just some big expensive thing at the end. I would not be surprised. Because that's how all the men, stinking Moon Knight ends with like a kaiju fight. Yeah. Uh, I've forgotten Moon Knight, yeah. Yeah. Moon Knight's pretty good. Moon Knight's great. The, the worst episode is the last episode. Because it's just a kaiju fight. But even then, that's kind of cool because right. it's like an Egyptian kaiju fight. But maybe, maybe maybe Marvel will, you know, kind of figure out, you know, the balance they're going for. Because, yeah, there has consistently been a thing where it's like at the end, they're like, well, no, it's got to be some big thing. And it's like, well, that's how we do our movies. And, and, and it's like, maybe you don't, maybe you got to pace it out differently for the shows. And not only that, though, not only are they like, we got to do some big thing, but they'll drop some story threads for the sake of let's do the big thing. And that leaves a lot of people being like, okay, I mean, it's cool and all, but where's... What about this, this, and this? Like, how about instead of giving us one big, crazy, bombastic CGI fest episode, give us three more episodes where you actually resolve all the storylines in a satisfying and complete way instead of rushing everything. Uh, my, my grief with Secret Invasion is there's a point... At certain, early on, there's like a point where Gravik the main villain or whatever, the main Super Scroll, is, like, killing, a, like, mostly, at first, killing just... He kills some scrolls, but in those specific moments earlier on, you're like, oh, maybe that's just how it has to go, I guess, in this society. But then at a certain point, I feel like he's like, all right, F, the, F all these scrolls. I don't need these guys. I'm, uh... And he was kind of like that before they, like, kind of, like, attacked him, like, try to, you know, maul him down, like, gang fight him, but before that, he was just like, oh, I'm just gonna kill this guy, and I don't care, all oh, you better listen to me, it's like, god dang it. That was great, it was done very well. You think so? It was exactly the kind of thing I would have complained about, and I was watching the normies react to it, and they did complain about it, they were like, you're killing your own people, you're not, they're not gonna have good morale, you're, they're gonna think you're a sinking an a-hole, and then they tried to kill him, so it was like, yeah, no, they did. They, you know, yeah, you're right. the, yeah, any other movie, what would have happened was they would have had him kill his own people to look tough and scary, and uh, that one there, there would have been no real consequence amongst his people for that. Whereas in this, they put a bag over his head and tried to beat him to death. Yeah. And it was like, <laughs> this is great. This, yeah, that's real. That Thank part you. is cool. As long as you get the consequence to killing your own people, because it, it's, it's too much of a trope of an evil... Of a evil leader to kill their own people like i am so evil and then everybody just follows them anyway. as long as you get the consequence which is your people trying to overthrow you i'm fine with it really but then they still just do i mean i guess because he he killed them yeah, he, yeah they tried to beat him to death and they lost their fight and he slit the throat and now and these people are like oh so if we rise up he might kill us they might still try again or maybe they won't be out of fear, but either way, I'll believe it. If they try again because he's a monster, I'll believe it. And if they don't because he's a monster, I'll believe it. Fair. Fair. Yeah, I did like when they, uh, what's, I can't, not mutiny. It is, I mean, yeah, I think mutiny works. Yeah, yeah, it, well, yeah I know that's the word that works. Treason? But, yeah, I'm trying to find, like, a specific word. Like, more like brawler. Like, they jumped him. But sucker punched him? No, not, I don't know. Some gangster, like, they sinking. I liked it, though. That was great. I, I, I just loved that. I loved getting that. Yeah. Because, like, at first I, I was thinking it was going to be, like, a slower, more methodical. Like, that one guy was going to try to convince some people, maybe. Or maybe he was just going to do this himself, by himself, and try to attack him. But, no, he's like, bag overhead. Get on the table. Six of you. Come over here and punch him in the stinging chest. It's like, oh, my God. And yeah. that and was a yeah. good fight. And he's screaming in, in like, in... He, when he, you know, knocks the last guy out of the room, he you know, comes out going, who wants it? Like, he's who like, come on! That? Yeah, that was actually like, cool. Like, yeah, that that showed that uh, him killing his own people, you know, it wasn't just some flavor thing. They were dedicated to the idea that, like, he can't even trust his own people because they don't trust him because it's a volatile relationship going on, a volatile leadership. And that's one thing I do love the most about... I, see, I thought we weren't going to say much about it, but now I do have a little bit more. What I love about it, the, like, yeah, he can't trust... Like, the idea of nobody in this effing show can trust anybody 
ever. Uh, yeah, they've they've committed to that pretty well. Yeah, and that's a it's a great constant theme, and they keep you guessing all the time. Like, there's a point when uh, Nick Fury and his wife yeah, have a gun, and you like, are they going to kill each other? I was going to say that Nick Fury's relationship with his wife has played into that theme pretty well, because like every scene with them together has felt like. Uh, it played well into what the show was going for and into who Nick has been for as long as we've known him, mm -hmm. where their relationship is like, it's not as uh, tender. It's not like a tender romance. There's yeah. there's this professionalism to it. And and when they both held a gun to each other, you thought, yeah, either one of them could shoot the other. I, and I, all, I, like, I would have believed it also if for some reason they just killed each other yeah, right no, then. That scene was great. Because, yeah, either one of them could have shot the other. Or either one of them could have refused, and when they both refused, they both seemed like pleasantly surprised. Like, they, like, <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> like even they went into that conversation thinking, you know, m like my spouse might try to kill me, and it was like a sign of their genuine feelings for each other and their respect for each other that neither of them tried to sneak up on the other. Mm -hmm. They were like, no, we're gonna sit down, we're gonna talk, we're gonna hold a gun to each other, and then we're gonna find out what what our priorities are. And that was that was great. Yes. Like that, like that is the most vulnerable I would expect to see Nick Fury. And so it was cool to see that, and that was great. Yes, I I love that whole dynamic. I like uh, it's kind of like Mister and Mrs. Smith in yeah. a way. It's like I I just love like there's a point where he's like, "Are you the biggest mistake I ever made in my yes. life?" Yes, yes, that's great. Yeah, and you know what? I I want to give Secret Invasion a little bit more credit though. Like each show, what they've done. Especially with the established, anytime there's an established character, they're really kind of like magnifying on their character what the other characters around them think of them, and like if they're a good person or not. Kind of and deal same deal mainly with Nick. It's like a lot of his friends don't like him, yeah. <laughs> and it's like God dang. Uh, but he's willing to take that on, which is also really cool. Yeah, Falcon the Winter Soldier was really good about that for Bucky, because Bucky has always been rife for some good character work, but has gotten, like, maybe one line of dialogue in a movie whenever he's in it. Mm -hmm. and, it and it's crazy, because he's in every Captain America movie. Yeah, and, I know. And never gets to be a real major character. He's just a MacGuffin. He's the MacGuffin for uh, Captain yeah, America movies. For, yeah, always. And yeah. and doesn't ever get to really... And so that show is the first time that he got to really be a character, and he is rife for character work. I know. It's like... Do, like, I love that they are doing a Captain America 4, but I'm kind of just like, can we get a Falcon Winter Soldier <laughs> Season 2, though? Like, uh, what if, I, man, it, you know what? It would almost be more fair if they didn't do a Captain America 4 and instead they did a Winter Soldier movie and Captain America is in the Winter Soldier movie what Winter Soldier has always been in the Captain America movies. Yeah, that's actually... Yeah, that's a cool that idea. That would have been, like, fair. That would have been, like, my time. Yeah, it would be more fair. Also, you still have Captain America. still have Anthony Mackie as Captain America in it. And they're just like... All right, we're doing one of your missions now. Yeah. We're going to figure something about your past that you want to redeem or some something. And you're right, they really do. That's what, yeah, exactly. And even WandaVision does it too with Wanda and even Vision to an extent. You know, it's interesting, uh, I wonder lore-wise, how the existence of Scrolls and the existence of Hydra and S.H.I.E.L.D. with the relationship there. Because uh, presumably Hydra had no idea the Scrolls existed. Because... Nick Fury seemed to have kept that a super tight lip secret, and they're scrolls. They're hard to find. So, like, you know, and the scrolls didn't show up until, like, what, the 80s? The 90s. Right. So, so yeah, obviously, you know, it's not like they were there the entire time, like Hydra was. Yeah, so, Hydra's there. And, and Nick dealt with them directly. So it's very possible that, that while Nick knew about the scrolls being his operatives on Earth, the Hydra never knew about it. But then it's like... How does how does Nick Fury never find out about Hydra when he has people who can take on anyone's face? Like how like who is Hydra going to keep secrets when they they, they don't they're talking to scrolls and they don't even know it? Unless a, some of the scrolls were also Hydra. That would be crazy. That would be awesome. That would be insane if some of the scrolls working for Nick Fury specifically find out Hydra's there and they join Hydra. Yeah, and they don't tell anybody. Yeah, they don't tell the other scrolls that are for Nick. They don't tell Nick. It's like what the heck. That would be that'd be awesome. God dang, man! That that's a movie. That's like there's a show called The Americans, just about like these uh, sleeper cell Russian spies in America, and they're like, I mean, you know, they're Amer It's called The Americans, uh, but they're not really. They're like spies, but some basically like that, but with a scroll who was also a Nazi. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like or Hydra. I, they like they, they like to make the distinction that uh, Hydra weren't the Nazis. <laughs> they were they're just for the Nazis. <laughs> but they, yeah, but they're still not. I mean, I feel like they're just as bad if you're teaming up with the Nazis. Uh yes. Uh, but yeah, Secret Invasion. Ugh. good. 